Hi, gang, and my radar meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Imagine a vaporous object the volume of Mount Everest. Now picture it floating like a birthday cake above the ground, spinning like a top, and whipping out projectile chunks of ice and bolts of electricity. Maybe it produces destructive straight line winds or even a tornado. We're talking the strongest storms on Earth. We're talking supercell thunderstorms. Supercells are the king of thunderstorms. They can tower 10 or more miles high and produce a hellacious assemblage of meteorological fury. Giant hail the size of CDs, 100 mile per hour microburst winds, biblical flash flooding, and enormous tornadoes. Let's break down what makes a supercell thunderstorm. By the way, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We have tons of great explainers, and with severe weather season looming, you won't want to miss all the explainers we have coming. All thunderstorms have an updraft and a downdraft. An updraft is a region where warm, moist air rises upwards to fuel the storm. Eventually, the moisture contained cools in the upper atmosphere, condenses, and produces precipitation. 100 or more thunderstorms may be raging on the planet at any given moment. Most are pulse-type storms. Those are thunderstorms that develop vertically. Eventually, the downdraft chokes off the updraft, and the storm collapses and dies. Maybe a new storm will develop nearby. This is a cycle that might last an hour or so. It's common in the south in the summertime, where upper-level winds are weak. Supercells, on the other hand, are very different. They rely on wind shear, or a change of wind speed and or direction with height, to form. Anything that grows tall enough in an environment like that rotates. That's the secret to a supercell's strength and longevity. A spinning storm will tilt, causing the updraft to become removed from the downdraft. Air spirals and corkscrews upwards, but by the time precipitation starts to fall, strong upper-level winds have blown it downstream. Thus, you don't have to worry about the cool air downdraft choking out the updraft. Your storm can rage on for hours. During the historic super outbreak of April 27, 2011, a number of rotating supercells in Alabama persisted for 300 miles or more and lasted upwards of six hours. The Mayfield, Kentucky tornado producing supercell December lasted eight hours. In the downdraft of a supercell, rainfall rates can top three inches per hour. Flash flooding is routine, especially on the plains, where the flat landscape gives nowhere for runoff to drain to. Large destructive hail can also reach the size of baseballs or larger. It starts small at first, but then increases in intensity until you have projectile ice hitting the ground and shattering. If we look at a diagram, you can see the forward flank downdraft of a supercell. The entire storm is structured like a hook. The rain and the hail cool the air enough that it becomes dense and collapses towards the ground. If that happens in a narrow enough area, you get a microburst. In a microburst, the air can't penetrate through the ground, so it fans out and brings 80 plus mile per hour wind gusts to the surface. At the same time, you have pinpoint lightning that strikes with no warning. Intensifying storms bring CG or cloud to ground lightning barrages. It can be scary. Now let's talk about the updraft. It's cloaked at the core of the storm inside the downdraft, which wraps around it. It's where air spirals inwards and upwards into the storm. Because air is rising, you don't usually get any rain or hail. Instead, you can get rugged clouds called scud, or a rotating wall cloud. This is where the rotation from the mesocyclone, or the spinning part of the parent storm, focuses. Eventually, the rear flank downdraft, or the cold air wraparound on the back side of the storm, cuts into the updraft. That can tighten it and squeeze out a funnel cloud. Visually, we see this as a clear slot. Here's a cool photo of a clear slot I took on May 17, 2019 in McCook, Nebraska. Shortly thereafter, a tornado touched down thanks to the Titan rotation. Supercells come in all shapes and sizes. Some are high precipitation supercells wrapped in rain that make storm chasing difficult and storm spotting near impossible. You likely won't see a tornado until it's virtually on top of you. Others are low precipitation supercells, which have little rain cloaking their updraft. They're visually appealing, their structure visible, but they rarely produce tornadoes. All told, supercells are small, isolated, and potent. They don't have to compete with neighboring storms either. We can expect plenty of supercells across the deep south, the midwest, and the plains in the coming weeks and months. Fortunately, we'll be with you every step of the way. Be sure your friends and family download the MyRadar app for the latest. I'm MyRadar meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.